Hey again, and welcome to the Real Estate of Mind Show. We're your host, Glenn and Amber. Hey, everybody. Um, we help everyday people create wealth through real estate investing. We have a great show lined up for you today, so we're going to kind of jump right in, and uh, I guess we'll let you tell what it's going to be. Yeah, so today we're going to talk about being an entrepreneur and how you balance that. How do you balance that work and home life? And sometimes being an entrepreneur, you know, you go, you go all in, and that balance is really hard to come by. So one thing that Glenn and I really believe in, and I actually keep a sign in my office, it says, never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a oh. life. And that happens sometimes, and people end up losing their relationships with their families and losing, you know, their relationship with their spouse. So it's, it's, it's cautious. And their health. Uh, their health, All yep. that. I think we should back up and tell people that if you don't know us, we have, um, so four children, uh, four kids that are ages, at the, at the present moment, they are four to 20 as we're, as we're recording this. And so... Um, and then my, my mom is currently 82. I lost my dad a couple of years ago. So, there, you know, aging parents, there's stuff that goes on with that. Um, I have an ex-wife and, uh, you know, there's, there's energy and the ex in, uh, I still call them my in-laws. We have in-laws that are elderly as well. So in sports and bit in five businesses, we have five businesses, four kids, parents, all the stuff that goes employees, along with that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Employees. <laughs> you have five companies with employees, not just five little companies. These are five right. multi-million dollar companies that do business. So, so a lot. And I think sometimes, you know, we we manage to juggle it all, but we never think about necessarily how we do it, but I think you have to really have intent. You have to have intent to balance your life. If you don't if you don't have intention to do it, if you don't sit out and say, I'm gonna live a balanced life, when Amber said it's so true, you can lose your health, you can lose your family, you can disconnect with people. And I'm gonna tell you some stories about that. But um, if you're so busy going after the goal, you can lose the things that are the most important to you. And I think it's so important as an entrepreneur that you don't forget, because if you make all the money in the world to build a big business, but you don't have your health, you don't have your family, you don't have your friends, you know, if you do all that and you lose everything in the process, so yeah, what? what's it worth? It, so what? It's not worth it. But you can have it all, but you have to do it with intent. You have to start with intent, right? So we're going to go over five tips of ways that you can help to have that balance between your work life and your home life. Yeah. And the first one's going to be be present. And, you know, I think this one's so important. And it's something that we remind each other of pretty often. Yes. Um, and I have to pat myself on the back a little bit here because I think I'm a little better at it than you are sometimes. You are. The, um, these are the worst. Yeah. Right? These are the worst. So cell phones and texting and all that stuff. And you have, we have access to information just like that. But it's not great. Yep. So be present, whether that is when you're spending time with your family, whether it's when you're on a date with your spouse, whether it's when you're at work, focus on the moment that you're in and stay there and accomplish what you're wanting to accomplish. And don't let all the other little distractions, the text messages, I mean, even the watch, even the, the eye watch is distracting. Yeah, they're as handy as they are. They're also very, because you're, right. you're having a conversation with someone, they're talking to you, you go, uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you're looking at a text and they're thinking, you're looking at the time, am, am I boring you? Or, right, it's crazy. Right, so so just be present and stay focused on what you're doing at that very moment. Amber's had to correct me a lot of times and this is where I've had to work at this in the past six months. I've made major strides, I think, at this, but our kids, sometimes I'll be home and I, I really try to, like Amber said, be present where you're at, right? I think you covered that, but be yeah. present where you're at. What, if you're being a parent, be present. If you're in a relationship, in a, in a, in a, a conversation, be present. Um, and if you're home, you know, if, but if you're at work, also be present. Well, sometimes something happens at home and I'm doing something and somebody needs something from me. So I'm doing something on my phone. I'm in an app. I'm answering an email. I'm doing whatever. Right. And all of a sudden, Amber, my, my ch children, maybe my seven year old, she's seven now, right? Just yeah. turned seven. You had to think, uh, just turned seven. So she, she's, she'll be talking to me and literally I'm not hearing her. Daddy, daddy. Daddy. That breaks my heart when I make that mistake. And some of you may be feeling this now and saying, I've done that. And I know, I, I know. And Amber will go, honey, honey. And, I, and once in a while she'll say, Glenn, if she first names me, I know I'm screwed up. <laughs> and I'm like, uh oh. So she says, Glenn. And I'm like, what? She says, your daughter's talking to you. And I'm like, oh, what? For me, I'm like, what a parent fail. I've gotten really good at that. I think in being present in the moment. And, um, you know, for me, it's been... Lately, I, I had to, I was getting very disconnected from my kids. Right. And I didn't mean it. I was so busy that my little ones, I was getting disconnected. My older ones are, you know, 20 and 15. So the 15 year old's got her own life going on and she's in sports. We try to make every game and all that. But the little ones, um, I was getting disconnected from them. 
And I realized that that was not good and that was not the kind of parent that I was. So I had to be, in, I had to have intention. I had to have intent to be a better parent. And when in your relationship with your kids, we're going to talk about family in a minute here too. But, oh, we do? Okay. Um, We'll That's cover, that. We'll, we'll cover yeah. that. we'll cover that when we get there. So you guys right. will cover that. So so wherever you are, be present. That's the most important thing I think you can do to maintain balance in your life. Because we do make time for things that are important to us. And you know, if you, you always follow what somebody does, and that's how you'll know what's most important to them. What's the movie that just came to me? There's a movie uh uh pro, um Oh, come on. Uh Glenn Close, the, she's a nasty she's Devil very bitchy. Prada? Yeah, Devil Wears Prada. And the, she, the, the not Glenn Close, whoever it is, I know who you mean. <laughs> Anyways, I don't know who it is. That's not the point of the story. Let's move on. There's a there's a scene in there where the, a guy is with the the boyfriend is with the assistant, and she keeps taking the phone calls. She keeps taking the phone calls. And he turned around and said, "You know which which relationship you're in by the phone call that you take." And so she kept taking the phone call with her boss, and that's the relationship she was actually right. in, and that. That summarizes being present in the moment. You watch what people do and how they treat their time, and you'll see what's actually important to people. So you have to be purposeful about being present in the moment. Yeah, and as an entrepreneur, I think it's even more, um, it's easier to fall into that trap. Meryl Street. Meryl Street. Thank yeah. you. So it's, it's even more difficult to fall into that trap because as an entrepreneur, just by nature, you're goal-driven. You're a risk-taker. You're, you get yeah. laser-focused laser on focus. something. And so you can kind of get sucked into that vortex of just going after your goal and, you know, I'll deal with all the other consequences later. But, again, think about what's really important and yeah. are those other things that you might even be looking at as distractions at the moment. If you lose those, what is your life going to look like? I'm a, as a 30-plus-year 30, 30 30 plus year entrepreneur, I can tell you that we get so focused on our goals that we forget, and we think we're building this awesome life for our family, but if we don't enjoy them in the process, or, or everything, our health, our family, our friendships, our, all the things that are important to us, if we don't enjoy them in the process, we get to the end, so what? doesn't matter. Right, so. exactly. Right. Number so two. number two is make time for yourself. Ah. <laughs> and that's something that, you know, as a... As a working mom, I find that very challenging to do, and I really have to, sometimes he has to remind me to do it, mm -hmm. um, because I'm not the best at doing it for myself. That's because, kind of a woman thing. I think a lot of times women don't make time. You, I, you I, would, guys, I would agree that it's more of a, a woman thing than a man thing. Yeah, you guys take care of a lot of things in houses and families, so you tend to pick that on. Yep, and, and a lot woman. of times the, the woman sacrifices whatever she is a sacrifice for herself, for her family. You know, I. I want to spend time with my kids, so I'm not going to have time to exercise. Or I need to spend time, you know, I need to go get groceries, so I'm not going to do this. You know, things start to, you start to kind of sacrifice all of those things for yourself so that you can handle all of the other things. I think it's so a fine way. Oh, go ahead. I, I, just, I think it's like super important to make sure that you fill up your own cup because when I don't take time for myself, my role as a wife, my role as a mother, my role as a business partner all suffers. And then I start to get resentful because I'm, I'm helping everybody else. Everybody else gets that piece of me, but I don't get that piece of myself. I mean, as a mom of little ones, I don't even get, you know, a minute in the bathroom by myself. She does not. She tries to go in there just to, just to sneak away. They're like, mommy, 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 mom, 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 mom. Drive you nuts, right? They're so, crazy. So it's so important to make sure you have that time. And when I do, I, you know, this last year I've been, I've worked out almost every single day. And just taking that half an hour to myself, it, it gets my endorphins going. I'm more alert. I yep. And I feel like a better mom and a better partner. I think you have to find what is your centering activity. Like, what is it you do? Because for Amber, she's alone time. She's one of those people that needs to have alone time. Yeah, I'm an introvert. So yes. an, an introvert needs to, I'm not like shy, but I need alone time to recharge. I'm not an introvert. Shocker, right? So I'm not an introvert. So that, but, but I actually find a lot of alone time. Summer times when it's warm, we're living upstate New York, I, I go on walks, I do all with my dog. I, I, I find that time to have some alone time or exercising or whatever it might be, or going on a bike ride, um, play with my kids even. Those are some things that are good to recharge. You know, every time we get on an airplane, if you've ever flown on an airplane, which is most people that are watching, you always know what they say. In the event of an emergency, when that oxygen mask comes down, you must take care of yourself first before you help other people. Don't put it on your children or someone elderly first Put it on you first, because if you don't, you'll probably pass out in trying to help them. And then both of you will, will perish, right? So that's not what you want. So you have to take care of yourself first. Like Amber said, if your cup is not full, how can you give to somebody else? 
You can only give what you have to give. And if you're depleted, there's nothing. If you're on empty, there's nothing left to give somebody else. It's like having a pitcher of water that's empty and just an empty pitcher and going, I'm trying, but I, I never filled it up. Well, you can't give to somebody else until you take care of yourself first. Right. So number four, or number three, three. rather, is uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, make time. I, I didn't. <laughs> I know. So we're clear. It was. It was. Totally no, you said we about. So um, make time for those who are important to you, and for us, that's our family and our friends and each other. That was a good one. I was going to say it, but I wanted. Um, to, I'm glad you said it. So I'm going to say though, you can't leave that to chance. You have to be purposeful. Be purposeful, like Glenn said, have an intent in the beginning. Yeah. Schedule a daddy date or a mommy date with your kids, and do that. Whatever that schedule looks like for you, once a week, once every other week, once a month, whatever it is, schedule a date night with your spouse or your significant, We're significant other. We're usually every Friday night. Right. It's been a little bit crazy lately, but we always try to make up that one night a week right. is for us. Because we work together. Friday we night. run all these companies together, but there are days when we don't see each other because I'm in my office, he's in his. We're both, you know, we're dividing and conquering. and or I'm we're seeing each other and, all day, but never really talk. Right. Like, we're like, hey, hey, we're working all day. It's like... Actually, how are you tonight? We get to dinner and go, or, how was your day? We're like, I bet I've seen you all day, but I don't know. Or it's that I'm working in my office focus and you keep coming in and I tell you to go away because I want to do number one and be present with what I'm working on. <laughs> we are in the section about big time for those important to you, right? <laughs> Just make sure we're in the right section but for that. But that does happen pretty often. <clears throat> um, so, you know, what, whatever that is, you know, spending time with your aging parents. To, to Let me us, talk about that for a minute. So, my, so with me... I um, lost my dad a couple years ago, and at um, the last couple years of his life, something had occurred to me. That guy uh, right there. Right there. I don't know if you can see him in the picture, but we, we love that guy. Ah, nice. that's emotional. So anyways. Mm. Anyways, so I made a point to go see my dad um, every Wednesday. I go up just sometimes for 10 minutes, and I actually had someone tell me that. I said, you know, make time and go do that. And I have to go spend more time with my mom. So if you're watching mom, I'm, I'll be making more time for that. But... Um, you know, my dad, I would go up and spend 10, even just to pop in and say, hey, we called him Buck. Hey, Buck, how you doing? But making that time, I'll never regret that time. Never regret that time I did that. And I want to talk about the kids for a minute. I, I, was, I told you before, I was disconnecting from my children. And I, I've never been a dad that disconnected. I'm always an all-in dad. So I'm like, what, what are these kids? What is going on? Yeah, we, I, we had conversations about it. I said, my older kids never did this to me. And Amber's like, you were a different dad then. You know, you had more time for them because you had, not just not because just of businesses, but... When you only have one child, that's what you focus on. When you have two children, you can focus on two. When you have four, it's a lot more difficult. And a wife, and parents, and you know, um, and five businesses, and employees. It's a lot more to focus on. So you have to be purposeful and intentful about what you do. So I actually started playing Donkey Kong with my kids. Um, you know, again, they're five and seven. They can play it better than me sometimes. But I, we are four and seven, yeah. almost five. Um, <laughs> We started playing that together. That's been something we've done for about three months now, and I've made it through every level. I've gotten through almost every star in it, and I've had to Google how to get through some levels because I'm confused, but we are having a blast, and they go, Daddy, DK? DK stands for Donkey Kong. They go, Daddy, DK? I go, you got it. We go downstairs, and I use, I'll i turn this thing off and, and not listen to it. And for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, we'll sit there. We'll take turns. We'll play. Now we find a way to play together. In the summertime, we'll go outside. We'll swim. We'll do things. And I think it's so important that you do But by doing that, for it took about two months. But I reconnected with my kids again. Now it's, good morning, Daddy. Love you, Daddy. Yeah, they like, were getting really resistant to you. Like, they were. And I'm like, what is wrong with you guys? I'm your father. You're supposed to love me. Well, no, you don't. You have to earn that. You have to earn that as a parent. If you don't earn it, if you're off spending time on your phone and spend time at work and spend time not being with them, why would they want to hang around you? And kids are the most honest. You'll know right away how they feel about you. So that, that was important, I think, for me. For Make time for the ones who are important to you. And kids only have one childhood. So we want to make that our kids' childhood as best as possible. Still so, showing them that we're going to go after our dreams and oh, yeah, go after work our ethic, goals. Teach them all that. I'm, I'm not saying, you know, spend all of your time with just your kids, but... Spend that focus time. You know, if, if I'm at home and I'm on the phone or I'm looking at my phone or I'm reading emails or something and one of my kids comes up to me, I will very often take my yeah, phone you, and you've been put really it face that. down on the counter and look at my kids in the eyes yeah. so that they know that they have my attention, not this. 
as I'm as they're talking. You know, I, I want them to know that they have my undivided attention and that they are important to me. Remember that one? I just I, I'm gonna get emotional again. This has been an emotional uh, podcast for me. But thinking about that, there was a there was a it went around Facebook one time. It was a little <clears> poem. <throat> I'm, oh, not, yeah. I'm not gonna do it justice, but it was a picture of a dad sitting there on his phone. He's scrolling through his phone. A little boy sitting next to on him. Park bench, right? Park bench, yeah. yeah. And, he's, and the poem I'm paraphrasing, but the poem really says something about you know. Um, at the end of the poem, it says, you know, I'm trying to get your attention. I'm trying to talk to my daddy, blah, blah, blah. It said, if, if only if only I could get inside your phone to get your attention. And I was like, I know. <sighs> like a dagger. And that may be a dagger for you. You may hear that right now and go, holy crap. And it's not just with little children. It's with your spouse. Go to a restaurant. Next time you're at a restaurant, look around and see how many spouses are on their damn phones sitting across from each other. And we do it sometimes, too, but we... We're pretty good about correcting each other on it. You know what I mean? We're pretty good about... I'm, I'm on a date with you or I'm on a date with your phone. Right. And so sometimes we have to deal with something. It might be about the kids. <laughs> might be, but for the most part, we'll put it down. But I've watched people through the entire dinner be on their phones. And you tell me you're present in the moment. Is that relationship going to last? I'm sorry to say it's not probably not going to. Because your relationship is who you're on the phone with, not who you're sitting with. Right. There was And there was a thing uh, I heard a while back about making sure that, um, you know, when you have a spouse or a partner they actually should come before the kids even because when your kids are up and grown they're going to leave the house and you still have a relationship with your with your spouse and if you put the kids first your whole life or your all of their childhood and you haven't put your spouse first then guess what then all of a sudden you have nothing in common and i will bet you that now that phones are as popular as they are today, phones are actually going to come in between more relationships yeah. than than even. Well, phones are connecting to other people, strangers most right. of the time. Right, Strangers on Superficial social media. Superficial relationships, crazy, crazy yeah, stuff. exactly. All right, number four. So number four is make time for work. And yep. this is also important. And because, it, you know, it goes along with that balance of, of making sure everything gets attention and gets time. And if you do, if you are an entrepreneur and you've got those goals and you're driven and focused, you have to make time to do it. And... There, there comes a point, um, I think, in any entrepreneur's life where you may feel like you've arrived and you just kind of want things to happen for you. Um, and you doesn't can't, mean you're there yet. No, it doesn't. Um, and it, sometimes it can take years and years and years. So put in whatever work that you have to while still paying attention to the things that are important. You know, make sure that when you're at work, you do work things. But also, there's a way to get around that. <clears throat> and what I mean is, Start looking at the things you do that are, that are um, the low-hanging fruit. In your job, what are things that you're doing that are $10, $12, $15 an hour? I guess you can't say 10 now. It's lower than minimum wage. But $15 an hour jobs, right? What are those tasks that you're probably doing? Are you doing things you shouldn't be doing? My point is, could you hire a virtual assistant? They're not a lot of money, and they can actually relieve a lot of pressure off you. Could you hire an actual assistant? Could you have a house cleaner come in? That was something that early on, you're like, I don't want a house cleaner. Well, I felt like I should be able to do it all. I thought I was Superwoman. The are day, you, I, the are you day, glad you have one? oh my gosh, right? The day I fired Superwoman, like my life changed. Superwoman was my alter ego that thought she could do everything and to yes. and be everything to everyone. But at work, the way to get more time to do things at work and also to enjoy more of your family is if you're doing things at work and you can have an assistant help you. That will free up time so you can have more time with your family. So either the work still has to get done. But it doesn't have to be you who does it, right? If that makes sense. You're flipping a house, all Actually, that. Actually, just like in real estate, we teach people to use other people's money to flip real estate. Delegate as much as you can and hire out that those lower paying jobs. I've mentioned it before, but you know, I, I have someone come clean up my dog poop in the yard. I don't want to clean it up. And it's 15 bucks a week, I think, for those guys to come in and they clean up dog crap. They, they're great guys. I think they're, they're awesome. They come through and do their thing. It saves me the headache and the hassle. And I can spend time literally with my kids, work, whatever it might be. Whatever other thing I choose to put my balance into, I can choose because I delegate out the things that don't do anything for me. Listen, if you love to clean up dog crap, that's something that just makes you feel like you've accomplished the day, then do it. That's fine. You choose what you want to do, though, and delegate the rest out. But when it comes to making time for work... That's how you do it. You make time for work, and when you're at work, be at work. Ske- well, we're going to talk about scheduling in a minute, because that's okay. one thing that, uh, well, that's probably the next thing. So, yeah, yeah num- number that. five is set a schedule, and neither one of us like schedules. Like, we both want to buck the system when it comes to schedules. i got to ask, if you're an entrepreneur, do you like schedules? Because no. most of us get in business, so no we're one... schedule adverse. <laughs> no one tells us, no one's going to tell me when to get up in the morning and when to go to bed at night and all that stuff, but what you find out is that 
You don't get anything done if you don't get a schedule done, really. You don't get accomplished. You might think you're having freedom, but it will catch up with you. That reminds me, too, of that um, illustration that that college professor did with the jar. With the, oh, yeah. um, so you, most of you have probably heard this, but the one where you take a jar and the professor says, all right, if I'm going to fill this uh, jar up with, with rocks. And he asked the classroom, is it full? And the classroom says, yeah, yeah, it's full. Are you sure? Yeah, it's full. All right. And then he pours smaller pebbles in it. And the pebbles kind of go around the bigger rocks and fall in and fill in the crevices. All right, is it full? The classroom says, yes, it's full. And then he says, okay, let's see. And then he pours in sand, right? The Correct. sand is the yep. next one. And the sand is even finer than the pebbles. So it fills in the cracks and, and crevices even more. All right, now is it full? The classroom says, yes, it's full. And then he pours water in. <laughs> so the the point of that illustration is that well, you want to put the important things in first. Right, the, the big you things. can't. If you the the illustration is that you can't do that in reverse. In reverse, right? If you said what what if we put the water in first and the sand, the pebbles, then put the big ones in, they won't fit. Right. Because it'll come out of the top. You know, all that stuff would fill up the bottom. It wouldn't fill. So you have to put. So that's the, the illustration. You, the, the rocks are the things that are most important to you. That that um, time with yourself, the time with your family, or the people that are important to you, the time working on actual work. Um, you know. All of those things, you've got to put yeah. those in first. And then the other stuff, you know, the, the things for fun and the things for recreation and that kind of stuff, those are the sand and the water. So let me give you a tip. Uh, this is what I did a few years ago. Um, I got a, a little app. There's probably different ones now. I think it was called Toggle, T-O-G-G-L. I don't think there's an E on the end for some reason, but Toggle or whatever. It's an app that goes on your computer and your phone. And every time you do a task, you click it. It's literally a, there'd be a big button on your phone. You click it. And the timer go. When you were done with that task, you'd hit the button again. And even if it was nonsense time, I was on the phone. And you start if you do that for a couple days, you will be amazed at how much time you waste on nonsense. You'll be amazed. When you do this yeah. one? How much time do you spend on social media? Right. It, it, but if you're honest with yourself, you'll see how much time. So I did that for a while, and I realized how much time I was wasting on things. But then I would get a step further. In my iMac calendar or Google Calendar, however you want to do it, you can make things into color, right? You can say, okay, this task when I do it is red. This task is blue. For me, blue is my personal thing, my personal time I'm going to do. That's in my calendar. Um, things that are for signature home buyers are in green. Things that are for Vester Pro Coach be, are in red. Coaching time is in purple. And I have different things. AINs in the business we have. That's in yellow. So there's a, there's a lot of things that I do throughout my week. The cool part is when you lay out your week on a Sunday night and say, okay, what do I really want? What are the big rocks for this week, right? The big rocks this week are one of the most important things I can do in each role in my life as a father, as a husband, as a son, you know, as a brother, as a, whatever roles you want to take as a business leader, as a um, investor, you know, what are the things that I want to do that are big? Take those chunks and put them on your calendar first. Just like Amber said, you're filling up your jar, fill them up with those chunks first. Fill up your schedule first and then honor those things. When it comes time for that, that block of time, do it. You'll be able to turn on your all the colors and look at your week and, at a glance and you'll see where your time is being spent. And you'll see how much time is personal. You can get a, you can get a rough idea of balance by color. You can kind of see, hey, I'm pretty balanced out this week. And if you're not, change it. If you look and say, I have a lot of work on here. I don't have any personal. Okay, time. what's important there? Time to schedule a date with, because that's what can be forgotten about first. Time to schedule a date with my spouse. Time to schedule a date with my kids. Time to go see my parents. Time to go hang out with friends. Whatever that might be. So this is a little tip to help you really start to own your schedule. Because the bottom line is, if you don't own your schedule, it's going to own you. And you'll get nothing done. You'll get very little done. You'll be 10 times more productive and 10 times happier when you follow a schedule. You're talking to an entrepreneur who hates having any kind of parameters on me at all. I'm a rule breaker. If you're an entrepreneur, you get it. That's what we do. But the truth is, if we can't control ourselves, how can we control our life? If we don't control our life, we control our schedule. Yeah, and, you know, we're all for entrepreneurship. entrepreneurship. That's a hard word to say. Entrepreneurship. We're all for that, and we really want you to go after your goals and do whatever it takes to get there. But we don't want you to lose what you've built in the process either. So Very true. let's recap. Go. Um, so for to recap, we have number one, be present. Number two, make time for yourself. Number three, make time for those that are important to you. Number four, make time for work. And number five, set a schedule. Again, we are helping everyday people create wealth through real estate investing and you deserve it.
You do deserve it. So yep. go out there, go after your dreams and have fun while you're doing it. You've been listening to the Real Estate of Mind show. We are your hosts, Glenn and Amber Schwarm. You can find us all of our social media on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, iTunes under Glenn and Amber Schwarm. And if you found value in this podcast or, you know, please comment, please like it, please share it with somebody else that you think could enjoy it. Yeah. And I want to double on that too. If you've listened to this today and thought to yourself, I know someone that could use this balance, please forward. You know, that helps us get out there. It may help somebody else, too, to hear something. It might just resonate with them. You have an entrepreneur that's getting out of whack with their life, and you see that. Don't send it to them in a scolding manner, but say, this might help you as you go through your journey, and we hope it can help a lot of people and reach. So please feel free to share it. We'd love to get it out there. So, yeah, and drop a comment below about what what things have worked for you to totally. create balance. We will, we will personally answer those, and we Absolutely. look forward to that. So remember, everyday people really do create wealth through real estate investing. The only question is, will you be next? We'll see you in the next episode. We love doing these podcasts for you. We'll see you next time.